Hello everyone and you are watching Sharing Vietnam at 8.30 p.m. on NetViet VTC10. As you may know, the issue of inspection and quality evaluation of electrical products according to the international standard become more and more required in Vietnam. That's why we choose this topic for our talk show today. And let's say hello to our guest, Mr. Tateriks, the director of Electro Technical Testing Institute from the Republic of Czech. Let's say hello to him. Uh, hello, Mr. Tatirik, and hello. thank you so much for taking your time and joining our talk show today. Uh, it's no problem. I'm welcome to be here. Uh, so, how long have you been here? I'm not living in Vietnam, by the way. Uh, I'm just coming for business trips. But uh, it's not my first time here in Vietnam. It's uh, about... Uh, eighth or ninth or visit of uh, this beautiful country. Mm. So as far as I know, you are the director of uh, the Electrotechnical Testing Institute in Czech. And this uh, institute has just had its uh, 80th anniversary of uh, celebration. Mm -hmm. So uh, could you share with us more about uh, this institute and uh, the celebration? Okay. Uh, the Electrotechnical Testing Institute uh, was set up in Czech Republic in uh, 1926 uh, just for uh, test the electrotechnical products on a Czech and European market in these days. And uh, it was it mainly uh, because uh, we want to provide some service uh, for state and for people of Czech Republic and for European uh, nations because uh, we are state-owned enterprise, so we are not primarily uh, to do some profit, to do some business, but the, our main topic is mm -hmm. just to serve uh, for the state. So could you share with us more about the common international standard, okay. especially for the product that Vietnam would love to import to uh, the EU? Okay, okay. Well, as I said, it's only about uh, law, it's about regulatory, it's about uh, standards. And the uh, European Union is very, uh, I would say, focused on, uh, on uh, protection of its citizens. So that's why we have to test every product which is in the market. And uh, it's tested by many, uh, many tests uh, from many sides. And it's not only one particular test. Uh, for example, a uh, refrigerator in the kitchen when you take it. So we tested if uh, electromagnetic uh, compatibility is okay. That means it doesn't shine any waves and not to harm uh, body and mind somebody. Uh, that the cables are covered, are not open, that they not cause any electric shock for kids if they touch it or somebody else. Uh, if the f filling of the refrigerator is uh, good to a uh, living environment, if somebody let it go out, if it's not uh, harm anybody, if it's not harm anything, uh, there are no heavy metals and uh, all the stuff. So uh, these kind of tests we are providing on every device, what we, on every product what we receive from producers to, to, to be tested. Uh, thank you so much for the very first sharing today and we're waiting for uh, the continuing uh, sharing of yours in the next okay. part of the program. Thank I you. hope so. And here will be a clip to give you more information about the Electrotechnical Testing Institute. Electrotechnical Testing Institute EZU was established in 1926 and has been in operation for 85 years. It started to carry out testing of products according to the electrical safety standards in the very beginning of its activities and assesses products and management system according to standards reflecting many different features nowadays. Now, EZU has been assessed and determined to fully comply with the requirements of ISO IEC Guide 65-1996-06, the basic rules, IECEE and rules of procedure, IECEE 02-2009-12 and the relevant IECE CB scheme operational documents. Moreover, EZU was entitled to operate as a Czech issuing and recognizing national certification body with the IECE CB scheme for the scope product categories and standard.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, Mr. Tatirik, so uh, what do you think about the current situation of Vietnam in applying the international standards in uh, electron uh, technicals or uh, device? I think that local producers are uh, focused on local uh, law. It's uh, common, it's normal, and it's uh, natural. Uh, but if they want to export uh, their products to European Union, uh, uh, there are much more law in the European Union, so they have to be more focused on the testing uh, their products. Standards in Vietnam are uh, given for local markets, and I think that it's not the same like in European Union. And this is the uh, main question: how to bring Vietnam? standards to European Union if they if local uh, exporters wants to export the uh, products to the European Union markets and that's why we are here to share our experiences uh, from European Union to give it to local producers and local business guys uh, to help them uh, export their goods for European Union markets. Uh, Mr. Tatirik, so as you have just mentioned, the Vietnamese standards uh, are given for the Vietnamese market. So is it any difficult for Vietnamese enterprises if they would love to meet the requirement internationally? I think it's not difficult. It's the question only of more tests and more uh, law and more uh, regulatory uh, notes. Because uh, if somebody don't push you into do 10 tests, you do only five if you need to do five. And if you, somebody push you to do 10 tests, you will do 10. It's not the question of how to filling these standards, but uh, it's a question of focusing on how to fill them. So up to now, what are your assessment on the uh, uh, reaction or the response of the Vietnamese enterprises to the uh, international standard? Uh, I would separate this question into uh, two uh, answers. First is that I uh, visit three uh, main laboratories in uh, Vietnam and I saw that uh, these laboratories are perfectly prepared to do even European uh, uh, testing uh, according to European law and, and standards. Uh, the Equipment is new, equipment is modern. Uh, there is no any problem with uh, uh, education of uh, employees in there or any knowledge. I think that only uh, the knowledge of European law is uh, uh, not uh, included in, uh, in these laboratories, which is normal. And uh, the second answer, that uh, local producer of, uh, of uh, any product uh, has to react uh, very positively that we want to bring the controls and uh, tests to uh, Vietnam because uh, uh, in these days they are producing uh, their products, they bring them to European Union and then in European Union they are finding that these products are not equal to European law, so uh, which cause them any more cost because they have to take it back or just destroy it uh, in there, which is, not, uh, which is not very pleasant for them. So if we help these uh, producers to test their goods in Vietnam, in, in their factories, that will help them much to save costs uh, for uh, export. Yeah. Thank you so much for those sharing. No problem. And here will be one more clip in this program to give you more information about the issue of inspection and quality evaluation of electrical products according to the international standards. Since 2005, the Directorate for Standards, Metrology and Quality of Vietnam has implemented a quality management program on electrical and electronic goods to ensure safety and interest of consumers and sustainable development of production activities of electrical and electronic products in domestic and facilitating the free circulation in the area. Accordingly, 13 groups of electrical and electronic products must be under quality and safety control, such as instant water heaters, electric heating appliances, and hair dryer and other equipment like kettle, rice cooker, electric fan, TV, fridge, etc. 
The decision is also made to control standard, which has the national standards, and the standard TCVN is entirely acceptable for IEC international standards for safety. Currently, Vietnam is promoting the process of conformity assessment, conformity certification to the products of this group when they are evaluated, certified, tested in accordance with the prescribed standards. Hello everyone and you are watching Sharing Vietnam. I'm Mr. Tatirik, so currently in the context of the global economic integration, Vietnam has to focus on the issue of meeting a different international standards as well as high quality in order to promote Vietnamese market and Vietnamese products, I mean. Uh, so what is your point of view? My point of view is that uh, uh, the Vietnam is ready uh, to fulfill all standards, but uh, all you have to do is just work on that because uh, uh, there is no uh, technical problem or a uh, problem in education. Uh, I think that uh, all you have to know is that the producers here has to be more focused and to learn uh, the European Union law, for example, and standards in quality, and of course the international law and uh, standards of qualities. And uh, if they will perfectly know these uh, uh, regulatory notes, then uh, they can meet it uh, very easily, I think. So there is a point of view that uh, the proper applicants, application of the international standard will contribute to uh, uh, the sustainable production and development of electrical as well as the electric products of Vietnam. So what do you think? I think that it's always the question that uh, one coin has two sides because uh, uh, right now you're competing in the world uh, with low price. Uh, just because you don't do any regulatory testing on all over the product uh, that uh, doesn't increase the cost uh, of the product so that you can compete with very low price all over the world. That's nice. And But second thing, uh, if you want to uh, uh, just put up uh, the products into a standard quality, for example, in the European Union, uh, you have to do these tests. So that means that you hire the cost and the price will not be so competitive anymore. But I think that uh, uh, if uh, for long-term uh, vision you have to fulfill all the quality standards and you can do that and still I think that uh, Asia uh, and Vietnam uh, can compete with uh, just a little bit lower prices uh, in, uh, in production. So uh, that's the complicated answer, but uh, this is, I think, my point of view on this uh, topic. Mm, so what will be the future plan of uh, your institute in Vietnam? Uh, first, we would like to share our knowledge and share our uh, experiences uh, about European Union standards in Vietnam for local laboratories, how to uh, teach local producers for export. And second thing, uh, in the second step, we would like to set up a branch here and cooperate more closely because I think there are a lot of possibilities uh, in many fields where we can cooperate with local state enterprises like we are. So you will have uh, more chance to be in Vietnam in the future? I hope so. For me personally, it's a uh, yeah, big opportunity. Once again, thank you so much uh, for taking your time and sharing with us, with us today. Okay. Thank no you problem. so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for your watching today. And if you have any question or recommendation, please don't hesitate to send us an email at sharingvietnam at gmail.com. We will see you next time. Xin được cảm ơn ông Tatiric và biên tập viên Minh Ngân qua cuộc trò chuyện thú vị vừa rồi. Còn bây giờ xin mời quý vị cùng gặp lại biên tập viên Nguyễn Tùng để cùng đến với câu chuyện hội nhập. Xin cảm ơn Huệ Chi. Thưa quý vị và các bạn, sự phát triển của nhiều tòa nhà cao tầng tại Việt Nam luôn cần sử dụng một lượng lớn năng lượng. Nhiều tòa nhà trong số đó đã có những giải pháp để hướng tới phát triển bền vững, tiết kiệm năng lượng từ đó giảm thiểu chi phí. Các giải pháp đó ra sao? Mời quý vị và các bạn cùng Open Việt Nam tìm hiểu.